Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and this is the second video in my series on map and compass land navigation. Uh, last video we talked about topo maps and what they were, how to identify terrain features on them, how to calculate uh, elevation, and today we're going to look at what the compass is, and we're going to also look at, at the end of this video how to orient your map to the terrain using the compass. The first compass I want to show you is this entry-level model made by Silva. Silva compasses are great and they range in price from about $15 like this one to about $70 for their higher end models. In the military we use lensatic compasses, but they tend to be quite a bit more expensive and harder to find in stores. Base plate compasses like the ones we'll use in this video series are generally less expensive, can be found in just about any sporting goods store, and in my opinion are easier to use and just as effective. Here's an example of the next step up in the Silva line, and as you can see, it's basically the same as the last one I showed you, but with a longer base plate. All of these base plate compasses have common features that I'll cover in just a bit. In this case, the longer base plate can allow you to get bearings over greater distances on your map and be a little more accurate making measurements. Either of these Silva compasses would be fine for land nav, but as you move up in price, you tend to get more features that are better implemented. So let's take a look at the common features across all of the base plate compasses. Generally, the compass base plate will be made of a clear plastic to make it easy to see the map under the compass when you're using them together. There's usually at least one ruler along the straight edge or edges of the base plate to help you calculate distance between points. This particular compass has a rule along the right edge that's already set for use with 1 to 24,000 scale topo maps. A very important feature of the base plate compass is the direction of travel arrow, which you'll use when you get bearings and when you follow bearings. Each compass has a rotating dial or bezel with the degrees marked on it. Within the needle housing, there's an orienting arrow and the magnetic needle, the colored end of which will always point to magnetic north. This is the compass that I use. It's a Brunton TrueArc 7. It's also a base plate compass, but with some key differences that give it an advantage over the cheaper models. For instance, this one has larger numbers marking the degrees, and the numbers are against a white backdrop, which gives them more contrast and makes them easier to read in low light. It's better insulated so that nearby metal objects have less of an effect on the magnetic needle. It also has an adjustable magnetic declination meter, which definitely comes in handy and saves us a little calculation later on. And it has a sighting mirror, which can help give us a more precise reading. This model also has an incline meter, but we won't be using that in this series. A compass is useful on its own because it can tell us which direction is north. It's very rare that we're someplace where we have no idea of what's around us at all, and we can use that general knowledge with a compass to get us unlost. Suppose you park your car along a road to do some hiking in this area. Let's say you know that the highway runs mostly east and west, and so you realize you're heading north on your hike. But somewhere along the way, you get off course, lose your bearings, and you're not sure which way to travel to get back to your vehicle. Without a compass, this can be a real problem. You could end up wandering in a much larger area, or worse, going in circles, which is apparently what almost everyone does when they're lost without even realizing it. But just by glancing at your compass, you can quickly determine which way is north. And in this example, just head the opposite direction, checking your compass occasionally to make sure you aren't walking in a circle, and you'll eventually come back to the road. So like I said, definitely useful. But when you use a compass in conjunction with a topo map, you can do a lot more. So let's look at the first thing to know about working with a map and compass together, and that's orienting your map to the terrain. Okay, I'll go ahead and tell you guys that this is not the ideal location to orient your map to the terrain, but I'm just going to show you this because it's going to be real convenient for me to have it on the picnic table here. But the reason this wouldn't be ideal is because inside this picnic table are nails and screws and other hardware, and that metal can affect the needle uh, in the compass. So I'll actually give you an example of that because we're going to be using this compass close to our waist in a little bit to get a bearing. And I'm going to hold it to where that needle kind of rotates freely. And you can see if I get the belt buckle near it, it does affect the needle by several degrees. And I mean that can really throw off your bearing. So you want to be sure when you get your bearings, when you're using this compass for anything, that you want to be as far away from metal as you can. That includes the, the metal rims of your glasses, belt buckles, buttons ink pens sometimes, anything that's metal, you want to keep away from this compass when you're getting bearings and when you're orient orienting your map to the terrain. But the way that it works is like this. Uh, topo maps, even uh, non-standard topo maps like this one, they're printed so that whatever's at the top is north. North is going to the top of the map, south is going to the bottom, east is to the right, and west is to the left. 
So we want to take our compass and we want to rotate this uh, bezel until north or zero degrees is lined up with our direction of travel arrow. And you do want to take time to make sure that you get it right when you do this because a little bit of difference in degrees here is going to make a big difference when you're actually traveling along your bearing. So now I can take the straight edge of my base plate and I can lay it on any of these grid lines or the edge of the map, uh, the grid lines at the edge of the map. And I want to be straight. So I'm just going to lay my compass right here along this line. And now we can see that the needle, the magnetic needle, is saying that north is that way. So now I can just rotate my whole map as a unit with the compass until my orienting arrow is in line with my magnetic needle, red to red. And they actually call that putting red in the shed. So and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to put red in the shed. We're going to take our time, make sure that we get it right, as in line as possible. So now my map is actually oriented to the terrain that it's mapping. So if I was standing at the south end of my map looking northward, what I would be seeing in the map is exactly the way the terrain is going to be laid out in front of me. And that's really important because in the next video, we're going to talk about how to figure out where you are on your map based on terrain features that you can see. And that's when it actually starts getting kind of fun because once we find our position on the map, then we can plot, we can get a bearing, we can plot a route, we can use our pace count to move towards our objective. Okay guys, so that's it. Uh, that's the basics of the base plate compass, uh, its basic parts, and how to use it to orient your map to the terrain. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to find your location on the map and start getting your bearings. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.